All right, what's going on guys? Today, I want to open up one of these challenger decks. I know at this point they're kind of old, old news, nothing exciting here. There's also not that much um, to look at really in the, uh, in the, in the box. It's just a, uh, a sleeve deck or you know, it's a, it's a deck and some plastic. So nothing too crazy. I just, uh, I kind of just wanted to talk about these. These are pretty cool, but first let's crack it open just in case you haven't seen one. And if you're not familiar with these by any chance, let's get this stuff off here. These are basically tier one competitive decks that have been budgetized and kind of simplified and changed a little and then stuffed into a box. You get about 50 to $60 or so worth of cards in a $30 box. So not a bad start if you want to get into like standard F&M or whatever. You can start with this because, I mean, you're getting more than you're paying for. So it's a good start and then you can upgrade from there, which is what I'm doing personally. But here we go. Yeah, not that much. We get a dice, a die. I believe it has the, oh no, it does. It has a uh, Planeswalker symbol. I thought it had the Ether Revolt, but I guess that makes sense. It's not necessarily an Ether Revolt deck, even though it is based around Winding Constrictor. Yeah, we just have lots of, lots of just stuff. Not much to see there. And then we have a deck and sideboard. There you go. That's see that and this is the that's why you want to buy it. There's a walking ballista right there on top. I, I know that's uh, it's very intentional. You know, they don't pay attention to the secondary market, but you know, they put put walking ballista right there on top. What's this? I don't even know. Nothing. All right. And do they really need to teach us how to play? Cast yeah, okay. Well, there's some stuff, but it's it's meaningless. But these decks as I was saying, great way to start a tier one deck if you just want to get into it. You know, you're getting more than your value. You've got a good deck to start with. You can absolutely 100% play this out of the box. It's not optimized. It's not perfect. You probably won't win your, uh, your local gaming stores store championship with it, you know, but you can compete. It's a way to play 30 bucks and you can play. And we'll take a quick look. We got four. See, and that's that's another important thing. Their actual decks, you know, we've got four glint sleeve siphoners, uh, three rish cars. Very important. These these don't need to be in the deck. This is something that's kind of it's a replacement for stuff. Um, it's probably replacing walking ballistas. These should be walking ballistas for sure. Uh, Gontis are good, not necessarily perfect for the deck. I'm personally going to be taking these out, or at least I'm going to be moving them to the sideboard. Uh, three Verdor's Gearhulks, very important. Uh, these should be Vraska's Contempt, instead it's Hour of Glory, so, you know, there's, there's some budgetizing going on. Four Long Tusk Cub, four Winding Constrictor, very important. We got four Blossoming Defense, two Walk the Plank, and a Fatal Push to round out the deck. So that's pretty much, you know, it's, it's close, it's not perfect. The, the important things here, this little stretch, this pretty much can all go. And these should be Vraska's Contempts, probably. But beyond that, it is, it's the deck. I mean, that's, the rest of it is pretty much on point. I mean, maybe these could be replaced with something else as well. But for the most part, it's there. You know, we also get Ether Hubs. Oh yeah, these two. These are definitely a budget version. These come into play tap. You definitely want, um... I forget what the green black land from Kaladesh is, but whatever it is, that's what you want. Or the crap, I'm just, I'm, I can't remember. There, there's also one in Dominaria now. I can't remember what that one is either. God damn it. Well, whatever it is, that's what you want. Uh, we got some of these, I don't know. The, the black desert would be better, but these are all right. And then, you know, we got some basic lands. So it's not perfect. It's definitely, definitely not perfect, but it's good enough. And that's what's important. It's good enough. You can play it out of the box and it's, you know, it's it's good enough to just to play. Are you going to win? I don't know, but you can play it. Well, that 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 went poorly. Come on, really? Let's see if I can fight my way through plastic. All right, um, get that out of the way. So sideboard, we've got dispossess for um, God Pharaoh's gifts. We've got these are good for uh, control decks just to generate value. You're trying to outdraw 
a, a control deck. Very useful. Uh, did I miss something? No. Uh, we have some, just, you know, some creature control, if that's necessary. These, I don't know. These don't need to be there, I don't think. Uh, Duress, more, you know, very good against control. Try to strip out their control spells. And then we have some artifact removal for, you know, vehicles and whatnot. So, yeah, it's, it's well-rounded. It's there. It's not perfect, but it's decent. Now, if you want to upgrade this, that's not the intent of this video. But if you do want to upgrade this, I can show you what I'm going to be doing personally. I'm going to be taking these two out for... Have some stuff off camera here. I've got three bristling hydras. These are going to work much better. And you may recognize this from a, a, a Walmart blister pack thing opening that I did. But yeah, we'll take these out for two of those. And probably one of those dream stealers as well. Take that out for a third one. And then we also need to get these other two out. Um, I can show you what I have on hand. I have... This is another just random thing that I opened. You may have seen that, right? Uh, that was in my Rivals of Ixalan pack opening. So, it actually works really well. Because if we look at, like, for example... If we get a turn 2 Winding Constrictor into a turn 3 Rishkar. So Rishkar puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on both. Winding Constrictor then doubles those counters. So this will be a 4-5. This will be a 4-4. That's 8 power. Which means this will cost 4. So 4-5, four, 4-4 um, four, four on turn 3. And then turn 4 we get a 12-12 with Trample. Obviously, that's kind of the, the sort of janky, not going to happen very often. That's kind of like a nut draw. But even without that, like, just Rishkar with any two drop, like a Glint Sleeve Siphoner, um, we get six power. He puts a plus one, plus one counter on both. Six power, which means uh, we can actually still play this on turn four because we can then tap these for green mana with Rishkar's ability. So it actually works pretty well. We can very consistently get it on turn four. So long as we have a Rishkar in hand. Like, this and Rishkar, most of the time, will result in a turn 4 or 12 12 trample. So, that's why I'm running it. It's also just good off the top of the deck because if we get it late game, um, it's just most of the time it's going to cost 2 because this is kind of a beatdown deck. So, that's going in. And then the last Dream Stealer, I just so happen to have another Walking Ballista here. So, we'll be taking that out for a second one of those. Now, that's, that's not, no, not everyone's gonna have a second walking ballista if you wanna do this on a budget, but you could just, uh, I don't know, do another bristling hydra or just anything. Um, a lot of decks are doing, uh, since Dominaria, green, black constrictor decks are very consistently playing land war elves. So if you wanna go that route, that, uh, that works as well. And I'm also personally, uh, these go here, I guess. I'm also personally gonna be taking out one blossoming defense, cause I think four is too many. Um, it just feels really bad when you get your, like, if you draw three of these in an opening hand or something like that, it just, it's a really good card. It's a great response to a control spell. So, you know, definitely not knocking the card. I just don't want four of them. I'm, I'm replacing one. And this is hurting the mana curve a bit, but I have one of these things. Uh, shout out to Breakfast with Nerds, because they, uh, actually won this in a giveaway. Um, destroys a creature or a planeswalker. So actually not bad. The, the, uh, the aftermath thing. Not quite as good. Just exile a creature and get a 2-2 black zombie. So nothing too exciting. But being able to kill any creature or any planeswalker is pretty nice. Especially now that Karns and Teferis are so popular. Uh, this is not bad. It would be nice if it was a Vraska's Contempt. But it's what I have. So yeah, my total investment isn't that much here, guys. Because I'm, you know, I got this. I got this from Breakfast with Nerds. I pulled this in a pack opening for the channel. Uh, I bought these. These are like 50 cents each. I got this one in a uh, pack opening that I did for the channel. These two I bought at my local gaming store. I think, yeah, they're like maybe 50 to 75 cents each. Very cheap. And then this I got because I actually bought another one of these. I have two Counter Surge decks. This one actually I got in a giveaway thanks to uh, Hipsters of the Coast. So thanks to those guys. Shout out to those guys. I, I mean, I, ran I won it in a random giveaway, but, you know, very helpful for me. So yeah, that's what I'm taking out. These and the the fourth blossoming defense. As we go all blurry. That's what I'm taking out. 
And that's basically my deck. I will work on the sideboard as well. I will definitely stop it. I will definitely be putting the Gaunties in here. Probably take these two out. And put the Gaunties in. Because these are good against... Um, stop going blurry. Stop defocusing. There we go. Uh, it's th These are good against Approach and stuff. Uh, just because if they cast Approach and it's on the top of their library, you can play Gaunti and yank it out. So that's nice. It's also good against the Black Control and stuff too. Just because you can potentially pull out a Creature Control spell and then destroy one of their creatures with it. So yeah, not bad. I still need to take out the last one. Um, I do have another Fatal Push, so Fatal Push will probably go there. That'll be fine. And yeah, that's it. That's my, that's my FNM deck. Is it perfect? No, not at all. But it's not bad. I can actually, I'll have to do a bit of a cut here. There's probably been lots of cutting, actually, but I will actually show you, actually, why, why, I don't need to show you here. I'll do an overlay. Here's my, here's my finished deck. It's right here. All right. So, um, yeah, we're back. Uh, just did some cleaning up because I have stuff everywhere. Very disorganized right now. But, um, the point I want to make with this video is I absolutely believe that this is the best product that Wizards of the Coast has made. Uh, you know, like possibly potentially ever. Like is that is that being too am I, am I going a bit too far there? Possibly, but um just the fact that you can literally pay $30 and be able to play at Friday Night Magic is amazing. I mean, it's really really good. These aren't perfect, but they're good enough. And I think that's the most important thing is that they're good enough that you can play out of the box and, you know, be okay. And that's important. And you know, there's an upgrade path. There is a clear upgrade path as I showed you. You know, you can get bristling hydras, you can get more walking ballistas. And then you're pretty much at the tier one point. This, this deck has changed a lot. It's changed a lot since, um, since Dominaria came out. I mean, they're not running, they're running Jade Light Ranger now. They're running Llanowar Elves. So it's very different, but this is pretty close. Like it's very close to the Green Black Constrictor deck of, uh, like shortly after Ether Revolt was released. Like this is pretty much, it's, it's close. It's not perfect. But it's getting there and you can definitely upgrade to that point for pretty cheap actually. I mean you need two walking ballistas. I mean I need two walking ballistas. Uh, I need uh, the dual lands. Uh, my total investment if I wanted to take this as close to that deck as I could. Probably like a hundred bucks or so maybe. And if I don't want to and I'm probably not going to. I'm, I'm probably just going to run this as is for the next few months until Kaladesh and Amonkhet rotate. But... My total investment here, uh, I bought, I paid 30 bucks for one. I paid like a dollar or so for the bristling hydras. And then I just, I had stuff laying around that I added to it. And that's basically it. It's good enough. And I'm going to be playing standard. And if these didn't exist, I wouldn't be playing standard. Before these came out, I didn't have a standard deck. I was playing modern. I was playing affinity and modern. And when my local gaming store had a standard FNM, I didn't go. I didn't go because I didn't have a standard deck and I didn't want to invest a hundred to two hundred dollars in a standard deck. And now, while I don't have a perfect tier one standard deck, I can compete and I can go play. I can go give my local gaming store five bucks for an entry fee that they weren't getting before and I can have fun playing standard for the next, you know, four or five months, however long it is, when Ravnica comes out and forces Kaladesh and Amonkhet out. And at that point, uh, truth be told, I'm probably not going to play standard because I'm not going to have a standard deck and I'm probably not going to buy a standard deck. Probably not going to do it. So that's why, and kind of the big pitch that I wanted to make in this video, not that anyone's going to watch it this deep in, everyone's quit watching by now, right? But the, the big thing that I wanted to talk about is I think this is the best product that's been made in a long time. And I just, I really, really hope these continue. I hope even if they are intentionally released around rotation time, so you can only get a few months out of them before they rotate like they did this time around, I would be fine with that. I wouldn't play standard for a few months, but if they make another set of these next spring, 
when Exelon and stuff is going to be rotating out, right? I don't know. The rotation schedule is all weird now because of the one block thing. So I don't know when rotation happens. But a few months before next rotation, if they if they do this again, then I will be playing standard again. And until then, I won't be. After these rotate, I will not be. So that's why I think these things are important. I know, you know, they're not perfect. I, I don't think there's anything better for the game or for local gaming stores than having these. I know my local gaming store, I, I'm pretty sure they sold out like almost immediately. I remember I went in the day they were released. I bought this and then the next week I went in for modern FNM and I think there were one or two left in the display box. So yeah, that's a, uh, that, you know, it, they sold well. I don't know how much my local gaming store uh, made on them, but at 30 bucks a piece, they definitely sold a box and a week. And I'm at a, a very small town, small local gaming store. So that was, I had to be pretty decent. And now, you know, people have decks to show up at FNM. They can play standard now because these exist. So I sincerely, sincerely hope these continue. I don't think there's anything better for the game than these things being on the shelves. So yeah, that's all I had to say, guys. I just, I just kind of wanted to open one of these and talk about them. Let me know what you think. I think pretty much everyone likes these, right? Can we all be in agreement that these are good and that they should exist? Should modern ones exist? That's a question. Should these exist for modern? That, that could be a little bit spicy, but, um, for now, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.